Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I am here to show off the little project that has taken over my life for the past two days, and that is my punk junk journal, uh, which basically, if you don't know what a junk journal is, uh, it's like you take a whole bunch of ephemera and random pieces of paper and you stitch it together into a rather messy looking uh, journal and like you make it into a book from scratch and it's something that I've been really itching to do for a long time um, and all of the videos no offense to people who like this aesthetic but a lot of the videos uh, like on YouTube about junk journals so far and a lot of junk journals that I've seen around have been very um, shabby chic kind of uh aesthetic like just just I'm not into it <laughs> like I'm sorry it's sort of weirdly fascinating but you know I'm just I'm just not into the look of it but of course it's just a method and it's just a a, a thing that you can make and you can make it look like however you want and that's kind of the whole point of it and so I wanted to try and make a junk journal that was sufficiently punk for my discerning tastes <laughs> Or whatever. Um, and I did. And I'm really happy with it. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to show a little uh, collage process for how I did the front and back cover. Um, and then I'll just do a little flip through of what it looks like on the inside. For the cover, I considered it leaving it this cardboard. I made the front and back out of this uh, old sketchbook, but I decided to do collage over it just to make it look a little fancier. Um, so as usual, I gathered a handful of materials that I thought would be, would make for a nice cover and that I thought that I might like to have on the cover in advance, um, which I actually only started doing when I recorded the first collage video of the International Zine Month thing. Um, and it's turned out to be really helpful because I have a lot of drawers of random collage bits and pieces and so just picking a few in advance has made it really easy like a lot easier to manage as you can see I tore that off at the top like nothing's permanent remember that <laughs> you can also see my crappy stitching job where I, <laughs> I messed it up but it doesn't matter because we're gonna tape some fabric glue some fabric over it whatever you saw the end result um so basically my entire collage process is just to take some things that I think might look good and then hold them over and hold them up sort of in the same way that like people will will hold up a piece of clothing in front of them without actually trying it on. That's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, the main centerpiece of this is the back cover is the photocopy of the back of a zine called uh, Greatest Rock and Roll. And oh, wait, what was it called? Whatever. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, and I just really like the great rock and roll. The great rock and roll dwindle. There it is, right next to Joe Biden over there. Um, <laughs> so I photocopied the front and back just because I really liked it. I thought it was really striking. And I decided to just make that the centerpiece of of the back cover. Like, just looks really cool. Um, so now I'm starting to glue a few things down. And I usually try to lay out everything in advance. More or less. <laughs> usually I try to lay out everything in advance so that I know what needs to be layered on top of each other, like what needs to be glued down first. Um, this time, I sort of did that. I mean, I mostly did that, and it worked out fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know why I decided to do a voiceover recording of this part sometimes, because it's pretty much just like I hover a piece over it, I see if I like where it is, and then I glue it down. Um, one thing I decided is I was sort of unsure if I wanted to do color at all, and by this point I had pretty much decided that I was going to do all black and white, um, except for like those little slivers of pink. I love that raccoon so much. <laughs> So I definitely wanted that there. That big circle is actually the back of a round sticker, which I used in the uh, in the zine itself. And so I was basically just like digging around my trash to see what I could find 
to make for like a title plate. So eventually I'll write the title on that as you've seen the end result. Um, sometimes I'll hover that white piece, like the envelope or just a white piece of paper over just to see what it'll look like um, when it's cut off. Because as you can see, there's a lot of overlap right now. And so I try to see what it'll look like without all the messiness on top. That's a little handy trick. Here, I just decided to fussy cut the raccoon because I didn't like how white the whole thing was. And in fact, I think that's mostly why I decided to get rid of the great rock and roll cover. And also just because I didn't like the text there, I felt like it was distracting. Um, so I ended up removing that. And I, you know, as I'm moving things around, I was trying for a while to get a uh, black piece of paper, like just a piece of black cardstock or something that I hadn't already cut up. And so I was, I actually had to pause the video and I was digging through my trash and recycling and just digging through everything to see if there was any sort of black piece of paper that I could use. And then eventually I just gave up and decided to, you know, bite the bullet and just cut up a fresh piece of black cardstock, which I, <laughs> you know, don't usually like to do, but hey, that's what art supplies are for, right? It's just to to use them. Um, so yeah, I like the way that the black looks a lot better. I think that it helps the text to stand out and it just gives it more contrast and it looks really nice. So that was pretty much what everything was going to look like. Everything was positioned where it needed to be. And so I knew what needed to be glued down first and last. And so now it's just the super fun gluing part. <laughs> um, at this point, I was also trying to decide if I wanted to do a border of some kind, and I decided that I would go ahead and do the, um, I do a, the electrical tape border, which is a little tricky, but I, and that's why I was sort of on the fence about it, but I just really wanted to try doing it, um, just because I, it would help protect the edges, and I just think that it looks really nice. So when I'm moving things around, I'm trying to leave enough room on the edge that none of the major pieces are going to be cut off by the fabric that gets overlaid or by the electrical tape border. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you can see a little sliver of my hair there. Um, yeah, so pretty much everything was just centered around the main um, title circle there. I was a little worried about it being too glossy on the back. Um, because I wanted the matte front so that I could, the matte part on the front so I could write on it. So that's why I was scratching it with the scissors is so that I could roughen it up a little bit so that the glue would maybe stick better. I think it turned out to be unnecessary and just kind of <laughs> fucked up the texture a little bit. Um, yeah, I added a little border around the raccoon just to make it pop out a little more. I considered doing the same thing for the whole circle um, but I decided not to. I just added a little bit of trim around certain things and just left the circle alone because I figured that the text would make it stand out plenty. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. That's what the collage part looks like. And now is when I'm adding the fabric strip. So I'm just going to be using tacky glue and, um, <laughs> holding it down. Yeah, pretty much. Um cutting it to size and then used a bunch of tacky glue and I just did the middle part first and then um lifted up the edges to put the tacky down there um you unfortunately won't get to actually see me do the electrical tape stuff but basically for the electrical tape um for the border it's a little tricky because electrical tape stretches and it does not adhere very well to paper which sucks because I love the nice glossy sheen and like the pure black of electrical tape and, and it's so cheap and easily accessible and I just really want to be able to use it. Um, but it's a little hard to work with. So what I usually do for electrical tape is I pull out and measure the size strip that I need and then I cover the strip in tacky glue. I fold it over gently around the edge and then I held it with just a shit ton of clothespins and I sort of had to move the clothespins around so that there wouldn't be bubbles. So like once it was relatively in place, then I would just hold clothespins there. Um, and then the rest is just sealing it with Mod Podge. Um, 
And that's pretty much it. And the, the nice thing about not Mod Podge too is that it prevents the fabric from fraying. Um, you can see I tried a little plaid border, but I just said, like, nope, black border is going to be it. But yeah, Mod Podge prevents the fabric from fraying, so it's a win-win as far as sealing goes. I've officially decided to title this one Junk Punk. It says Summer 21, Wesley Presents Junk Punk Zine Edition. <laughs> and I did this kind of because I have a whole bunch of little pieces of paper and ephemera that I wanted to do for another potential edition from, uh, like, a Berkeley edition from a bunch of stuff that I gathered while I was living in Berkeley. But for now, I figured, you know, the the junk that I had the most of, the most stuff that I had was um, random envelopes and things from zine trades because all of them are so cool. I have a bunch of postcards and envelopes and stickers and whatever from zine trades and I don't want to just throw them away, but also they weren't doing anything just sitting in my box. And so it seemed like a good low stakes kind of thing that I could experiment <laughs> on um, because I'm always going to be getting more envelopes of zines and stuff. So um I think it worked out really well. Uh, I guess I'll just show you what it looks like on the inside. Yay! So, <laughs> I did cover up anything that had an address on it for me or the person who sent it to me, and there are a lot of those things because this is primarily made up of envelopes, so just ignore all that. Um, <laughs> but besides that, uh, this is pretty much what it looks like on the inside. I've got in the front here... My favorite thing, which I include in a lot of my uh, letters nowadays, and it's the uh, Why Cheap Art Manifesto. And as you can see, it folds out all fancy-like. Um, and the whole point of it is that, like, Art is Cheap Hurrah. It's from Bread and Puppet Glover, Vermont, 1984. I don't remember where I found it. Just whatever. Tumblr, probably. <laughs> and so, yep. Just had to put that in the front. And then here I will do a little introduction thing. No, I don't have any writing or anything in it yet, but I will be writing on these pages. I got a secret little pocket in there. Um, on this side, I've got a couple of business cards, one from Kareen Halbert, one from God Save the Queer, and then two from Jolie Ruin. And they lift up so that I can write underneath each one. What I plan to be writing in this is mostly just stuff about my zine experience and treat this sort of as like half scrapbook, half commentary. This is a newspaper page from the Boston Cumbish, which is like a local independent arts newspaper. I got a bunch of stickers from various uh, zine people. <laughs> um, another envelope. And, you know, a lot of these envelopes I can stick other things into. I kind of don't know if I actually will. I know that's a lot of the appeal of a junk journal for people, but I don't know what I'll have to put in there. Anyway, I got this letter from a zinester that folds out, and I don't know, maybe if I have another letter I can put it here, or I'll just write stuff there. I got this little um, flyer from Nina at... Echo zines, and I put it in upside down, sort of accidentally. This is just taped in, so if you want to stick in a single um, piece of paper to stuff like this, you just tape, put a piece of tape on either side, and then it flaps over. If you have something that's, you know, two sided and that folds together, then you can stitch it directly into the spine, and that's what this is. So you can see that's how it got stitched in. Um, and that's where most of these things are, is that they're, like, things that are folded in half. Um, this is from Take Care Zine Distro, just glued directly on. Forgot to mention, but obviously this is just, like, a nice little note that I got from a zine trade from Celeste, which was really awesome. Um, this was, like, a flyer from Uzine. Um, I mean, fuck Morrissey, but whatever like <laughs> it's it looks cool and I, I can always write my commentary on it this is a little note from julia at crap pandemic um just more boston compass this is just an envelope with my favorite stamps of all time i actually have like a tote bag that features the stamps from the spooky silhouettes stamp 
series or whatever. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I use that for zine events and I just, I like them a lot. You can get them from the postal website. They sell actual like merch of their stamps <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> which I totally like. And here you can see we, this is three signatures total. And so a signature is like this, whatever, folded clump of paper <laughs> and um, it's stitched. Each one is stitched directly into the spine. The spine and the cover are cardboard, which are covered as you probably saw in the um, collage portion. Uh, yeah, I had a fucking heck of a time stitching these in. Like, I it I figured it out eventually. I didn't only stab myself once, and that's good. <laughs> so I use these really big, thick envelopes, uh, like the Manila uh, eight and a half by eleven envelopes for, or nine by twelve, or whatever it is for, sort of the um, covers of each signature, just because they're a little sturdier. Um, in here. Ho ho ho! Secret, secret, not so secret pocket where I'm just sticking in a few mini zines. And you can fold it right back up. Like I said, I'll write on all this. More from um, Boston Compass. This, um, I just really liked this. It is common sense now to see progress that's synonymous with disaster. And this is from. Um, the uh, Knowing the Land is Resistance zine. I think this is from number one, and this is while I was printing out a copy. The first copy that I printed, I fucked it up, <laughs> and um, so I just cut this piece out of it, and this is a single sheet, so it's just uh, glued onto the newspaper, but that works because then it, you know, makes the newspaper more stable. Got another envelope, which again is like a little pocket. This is just taped in. Like, anything that's a single thing is just taped directly into it. This is just, like, one of those printer, um, like, cleaning papers. And I've been hanging on to these for a long time from when I first set up my printer. And I really love how they look. And I've been using them sort of sparingly throughout. And I just never wanted to cut this one up. And so I just put the whole thing directly in here. Um, I got the sticker from Liver Mortis zine in a trade. I have a couple other Liver Mortis things in here, I think. Um, wasted ink uh, envelope. Here I got this form that I thought I had to fill out for an international shipment, but I'm like never clear on when I need to fill out one of these international forms. And I think that like, it's like you have to fill it out if it's over a certain number of ounces or if it considers a package. And like sometimes people consider, like the people at the post office consider my little um, envelopes to be packages and sometimes not. And I know it's supposed to be if it's under three quarters of an inch in thickness, then it's not a package. But sometimes they don't follow their own rule and it's sort of annoying, but... Anyway, just put that in here. And this is a shoelace from my very favorite pair of shoes. They were just black uh, Converse, like regular shoes that I bought these olive green shoelaces for. And I wore those for years until they just completely fell apart on me. And I always kept the shoelaces. And so now I have one of them in use to stitch this directly onto the paper and so now it makes like a little mini mini thing i'm not going to show each individual page because i didn't bother to put the post-its over the information but like yeah it's like a little book within a book i got this thing um <laughs> which seems like a silly thing to include but it's like this delivery thing from where <clears throat> where i had someone sending me uh something that they specifically didn't want to have lost and so they required a signature but my building is stupid and the entrance is like in a really weird place and so um they missed me and then it just got lost anyway despite <laughs> that so like the fact that it needed a signature was what caused it to get lost and that whole thing was super fucking frustrating and so i put this in here just to talk about here's just another little flap yep um, more pieces from this cool envelope that Nina sent from Belgium, and so it's got, uh, how, how would you pronounce that? 
Ferenig de Staten? I don't know. <laughs> Staten? I don't know how German Belgian is. Actually, is Belgian its own language? I feel like I should know this. Sorry, Nina. <laughs> Got another little flap. Which I can... And the nice thing about these little flaps is that I can write underneath it. Um, which is cool. And here's, like, the other side of that, uh, printer page. It's like really like it. This fucking awesome Toxic Femme postcard, which I've been wanting to use forever, and I just didn't want to cut it up for, like, it just, it looks so good all together that I feel like taken separately, the images just aren't as, don't have as much impact, so I wanted to keep it together, and so taped it right in. And then this, uh, Count Edgelord. <laughs> this is just like a um, from my, uh, tray, fr from the, uh, frick, from the order from Small Zine Volcano, that's what it's called, um, where I got all the u -zines. uh, there were a couple of mini zines that were unfolded, and unfortunately this one got kind of crumbled in the mail, but this page was preserved, the sheet of it, so I just cut it out and I taped it directly on here, because I thought it was funny. I got more newspaper. This page I will probably need to reinforce in some way, especially against the postcard, but we'll figure it out. Um, this is like a little print that I got at a farmer's market from an artist, uh, Rosalind Dale in Bloom, and um, I got like some nicer stamp prints of it, and then she threw in a bunch of these crummy ones for free when I mentioned that I was an artist. Not that it's crummy, but you know, these like like imperfect ones. And so I'm like, you'll probably find a use for these. Like, you bet your ass I will. Here's one. <laughs> and so now I got this nice big sheet for writing on. Another secret pocket at the end of this signature. And then the third signature, the last one, um, zinesters do it on the photocopier <laughs> from Look Mum Zine Distro. Um, I got this sticker from, uh, uh, I forgot what the zine project is, but I know that the creator, like, one of the zines is left-wing anarchist queer, and so the, like, they sent just a shit ton of these homemade stickers in with it, and I've been sending them out in other zines, and I've stuck them random places, and I just had this one left over, and I thought it looked nice here. This is, like, a really amazingly cool envelope from a zine trade and it's so cool I managed to like this big splotch on it you can't see how bad the splotch is here exactly but like this is part of it managed to be grease from a donut <laughs> so that's a little embarrassing but <laughs> whatever this is like some Russian newspaper I couldn't even tell you where I got this from I feel like it was just packaging and something like I'd ordered something from someplace and it came wrapped in this newspaper, but I've been using it in various collages. Um, here are a couple of bookmarks. Whoops, that's coming up a little. Whatever. A couple of bookmarks from Trident Booksellers and Cafe, which is this really cool little independent bookstore in downtown Boston that I visited. And it's a little expensive, but I mean, it's not expensive as far as bookstores go. It, it's expensive because it's a new bookstore and not a used bookstore. And, you know, being a library person, anything that's more expensive than free is like expensive for me. <laughs> but I did find um, Rebel Witch by Kelly Ann Maddox, which has become one of my favorite books ever and has taught me so many things and just really helped me to reevaluate a lot of witchcraft and spirituality things, which, you know, I'll get into at some point. I've got some stuff that I want to talk to about that, but either way, I really recommend the book, and so I just, I just wanted to put the bookmarks in here, um, because I feel like I never use actual bookmarks when I'm, <laughs> when I'm reading. <laughs> I just use, like, random receipts or whatever the fuck I have lying around, and to sort of match the X layout, I got an O-shaped sticker from Livermortis. Hate the sun, Livermortis zine. F I, I do hate the sun. <laughs> I'm too pale to deal with fucking sun all the time. Um, this is another one of the mini zines that I got. Um, okay, Abacus, I guess, was the name of the mini zine. And this one was unassembled. And 
I like it, but I almost like the images better collectively than individually, and so I just stuck the entire thing in there rather than, um, you know, fold it up and make it a mini Um That's me! I got this stuff from the Watertown Library Zine Fest that's coming up, which I'm going to be participating in, and so I have a flyer from that, and it's this really cool double-sided thing. This is one of my favorite postcards ever, and I send it out in zines sometimes, <laughs> to whom it may concern. <laughs> uh, and so I just have that in here. Uh, Kareen Halbert again. And this is a really cool envelope that I wish I could show you, but it's like 90% my address, so <laughs> can't really show you. But uh, this one does not have a... You know, this envelope again is not usually here. It's just to cover up my address. Another flyer from Uzine. Um, the Uzine Paper Mache Working Bee and Crazy Manual Typewriter Sale. Sounds fun. If you were in 2011, then <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I got this cool, this book is haunted solo journaling game. I got it from Ichito. I always call it Ichito. I don't know if that's actually Ichito, whatever it's called. Um, got it from Itch and um, fucked up on printing this one uh, because usually you'd want it to flip this way, but this one I accidentally fucked up on the printing and so it flips this way, but that's okay because it works really perfectly for flipping up and down like this, which is cool. Um, I hate washi tape. I really hate it. Like, as an experiment, I bought this set of plaid washi tapes and I like the look of them and I feel like they could be neat like the patterns are fine I mean you can get a fine pattern in anything but I just realized that it doesn't stick to anything I don't know if I just got really shit quality washi tape or something but it's like it doesn't stick to anything and I can't even glue it down with a glue stick or whatever because it just the glue doesn't attach to it properly like I just I hate working with it, but this one, the envelope, already had washi tape on it. Uh, you can sort of see that. It already had washi tape on it, and to be honest, I just really hated the pattern. It was not up my alley, and so I just took some washi tape and covered it, and it is mostly sticking. I just don't like how it looks. At, I mean, I like the the plaid. The plaid's fine. I just... I just hate dealing with washi tape. You can see, even now, it's washi tape that is just supposed to be attaching to other pieces of washi tape, and it keeps coming up, and it won't stay flat, and I hate it! Um, so yeah, I'm not a washi tape person. <laughs> this is a little half of a letter from, like, half of a note card that I got from a zine trade. This is like a cool uh, business card from Wirehead Laboratories that I've always liked, and so, um, you know, I can write under there, I guess. Here I've got, um, as you can see, the other side of the ZineFest thingy and another sticker, uh, People Not Profit. Um, I really like this page. I just think it's really cool. This was from a little newspaper mini-comic thing thing from um, Microcosm Publishing, and I've always liked it, and I've had this image for a long time and never known what to do with it, and it just fits really well in here. And it's another secret flap, because those are fun, and this is like the one opportunity that I can do it without assembly being a huge pain in the ass. So <laughs> that's really cool. I'm excited about that. Just more other sides of papers. This is a little piece from an envelope from Fiddler's Green that was mailed to me, which I just think is really pretty, and that is a flap also. And um, almost to the end here, another little postcard that I got from Helena Tay Art, and it's just really nice. Another, this is a Livermortis postcard, really love it. And that's the end. That's, um, that's the book. And then here's the back. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really jazzed about it. I am so happy that I've managed to get this to be aesthetically what I wanted it to be and how, you know, this is proof that 
you don't have to follow the aesthetic that someone else does. Um, you just to follow the instructions for the project, I guess, if that makes sense. So like, this is mostly like me proving to myself that I don't need to be so pretentious about things. I don't need to be like, oh, I don't like the way that that looks, you know, and have that put me off from doing something like that is that silly. Like if I want to make a punk junk journal, then do it. And frankly, I'm kind of surprised that junk journals in general haven't really taken off among punk communities, among um, zinesters, because it's it's very in line with DIY spirit. It's very in line with punk spirit, where you just take stuff that you already have. Obviously, this is all stuff that I already had. None of this was purchased from anything for the purposes of um, making this book out of it, you know? Like, I purchased the zines that came in an envelope, and I happened to save the envelopes because I'm, like, a, just the sort of person who saves a bunch of shit all the time. And, you know, you can make this with anything. You can make this with recycled newspaper, you can make this with whatever, and make it look however you want, and... So I guess, yeah, so I guess I'm just surprised that, you know, more, more punks and more zinesters don't do it because it's like, it's totally, it seems like it'd be totally up our alley, right? So, um, punk people and zinesters, I highly encourage you to try this out, um, to make a little junk journal. I mean... I couldn't recommend a particular video that I followed. I just watched a whole bunch of them and then figured, yeah, I kind of get the gist of it. I suppose if you wanted me to at some point, I could film making another one, like film making the Berkeley one that I wanted to do. But, you know, it's not hard to find junk journal um, tutorials and stuff out there. There are ways to do it with glue. There are ways to do it with stitching. This is part stitching and then part glue, like, obviously I glued the, um, little strip of fabric there, and, you know, there are ways that you can do it that are no-so, there are ways that you can do it where you can move the pages around, like, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling at this point. The point is, <laughs> more punk junk journals. I mean, it rhymes. Come on, it's perfect. So, thanks for checking this out with me. I can't wait to write in it. Probably won't share the written version because I anticipate using this mostly as, like, a journal-style thing, so most of the writing is going to be pretty personal. Um, but that's why I wanted to show it off right now before I wrote anything in it, um, because I'm very excited to write in this, and so I had to get this video um, over with. I don't mean to say it like that. I don't... <laughs> you know what I mean. I just had to film it right away. So, yep. That's all I got. Very happy to be doing this project, and I'm happy to have something to write in as I start school up again, which frankly I'm not super looking forward to because it will cut in my time. It'll cut into my time to do random shit like this. So, go on in my stead. Go on <laughs> while, while I'm too busy to be doing this. I mean, frankly, this whole project took... I say it was like two days. It really wasn't, uh, you know... It was maybe like... I don't know, how many, how many hours? Like, four or five hours to put the whole thing together? Something like that. So, it's really not that bad. Anyway, more rambling. I'll see you later. Bye.